If you're running an M1 or M2 Mac computer, be it a MacBook Air Pro M1 Mini like I'm using here, you can now run Stable Diffusion locally to generate your own AI art, which is absolutely wild because I wasn't sure how quickly this would be possible. And I literally from the time of me starting to plan this video two days ago, there's already been a second tool, which is what I'm showing here. The first one required you to install a bunch of dependencies and it was kind of complicated, but not, you know, it was still doable. This one requires you to do nothing but download one file, which is pretty awesome. So head on over to the GitHub link in the description below. The tool is called Diffusion B, and you just download the DMG file for your computer. Again, you need to be on M1 or M2, you know, Apple Silicon for this. Once it downloads, click the DMG, drag it over to your applications. Give it a sec. It is a 535-ish meg file, but it takes up about two gigs once you install it. And that was the entire installation process. We can now close all of our windows here. Go ahead and launch it to Fusion B. Now, I will say up front, this is not as fully featured as some of the other Stable Diffusion tools that you would build yourself are, but it is a great start. And I will keep you posted as more options and controls are added, as even the developer of this one has already said, they're planning on adding the rest of the, you know, controls and variables and things like that. The AI art open source tool landscape changes very rapidly, but I want to keep you all updated. Okay, you can see here, we are now downloading the models. So the app itself takes up about two gigs, but then you have to download the models, which looks, uh, with most of the tools, is about eight gigs. So you're looking at maybe 10 gigabytes. Now, something specifically it mentions here is that Stable Diffusion requires a lot of RAM. 16 gigabytes is recommended. I'm actually on an eight gigabyte uh, M1 Mini. So we're gonna see how this goes because the eight gigs has not been enough for a lot of stuff. While this downloads, my backdrop is a complete disaster. I'm a complete disaster. I am in the absolute middle of a complete studio teardown and renovation, which is gonna give me a lot more space for creative work for this kind of stuff to make videos for this channel. It is gonna be awesome when it's done. I'm still maybe a week from being done. That's why uploads kind of slowed down a little bit here, but I wanna make sure I get this information to you all and then we can start doing more creative projects once I have this bit. Okay, it looks like the second part of this model is only 341 megs, so maybe it doesn't require that much space. Just make sure you got some space available, which I know is difficult on these Macs where they don't give you upgradable storage. All right, it is now loading the model and we can start generating. This This specific GUI will have text to image as well as image to image. So you can generate images based on other images as well. I don't really have anything saved locally on this Mac to use, but we'll pull an image and Make it work. So I wanna make sure I mention this every time we talk about it. If you're unfamiliar, Stable Diffusion is another great AI art generator tool, kind of like Midjourney or Dolly 2. It's one that you can run locally, run on a server, things like that, that has a lot more kind of modularity to it to allow you to use extra things like certain upscalers, face restores, things like that kind of all built in, as well as just has sometimes a better job at generating certain types of assets. Okay, here we have our text prompt and a generate button. And then we have some advanced options. We can change image height, image width, steps. Steps are the number of details, like not the number of details, but the, the level of detail that it gets to. Between 25 and 50 is usually recommended. Once you go beyond that, it's basically like deep frying the image and it ends up kind of probably looking worse than you might expect. Guidance scale is how much it adheres to your actual prompt. So that's kind of like the chaos and stylized uh, flags for Midjourney. The default on most of these GU GUIs are about 7.5. If you take it down to zero, then it's gonna adhere, adhere strictly to your prompt, but then it's not gonna have any extra details, so you have to be as descriptive as possible, and you gotta give it some creative freedom, and then as you go up, it's gonna, you know, wander further and further away from the prompt that you told it. So we're gonna leave the defaults here. We're actually gonna make it smaller. We're gonna do 256, just to give ourselves some performance room since we don't have a ton of RAM. And for this, what do we want to generate? I want to generate a cu cute die cut sticker of an adorable cat in an astronaut helmet. And we're gonna click generate. And it's gonna generate our image. This is gonna take a little while. Go get a drink or something. Do some laps around your office. Whatever you gotta do. I'm gonna keep watching a NerdForge video. Actually, I did not have as much time as I expected. Wow, that went really quick. I guess because it's the lower resolution. I haven't the slightest idea what it just generated, though. Okay, then. 
We're just gonna take out the sticker part. That's something I've been doing for mid-journey, just to try to get more sticker-like things, but that's not... That is nothing. We're gonna try again without the sticker. See what it says. <laughs> there we go. We got an adorable cat, kind of in an astronaut helmet. We got an image. We can now save it. I'm just gonna prop up a prompt. We can browse to our... We'll just save it to our desktop. Save. We can also do image to image. Oh, that's coming soon. Okay, we can't do that one yet. You also get some logs of how it runs, which is pretty cool. It is using the DDIM sampler. So in some of the Windows GUIs, you have a bunch of different samplers to choose from, which will give you different results. Uh, we can explain that more in a separate video. This one only gives you one, but in terms of speed, we're looking at one to two iterations per second, which is not too far out of line from what my beefy powerhouse computer can do. Now we were running at a slower, you know, lower resolution. All right, let's do space dino in astronaut helmet floating in space. And we need to change that in to wearing. We're gonna say cute kawaii Disney sticker. We're going to go over here to our advanced options. And we're going to do the full size. We're going to give it some more steps. We'll do 40 steps. And click generate. This is going to take... take, take, take. I believe we... Believe, believe, believe. The mouse is now lagging, so... Maybe not. Yeah, that's going to take a fair bit longer. And our higher resolution, higher step image is complete. We have a fairly detailed, cute, kawaii, Disney-style sticker of a dino in a, an astronaut helmet. You don't really get a ton of the dino details here, but I could specify a specific dinosaur, the style, things like that. But you do have the image here, and now we can save it out as usual. Give it the space dino name, click save, and we're done. So it's fairly simple for now. There's not a ton to it. They're still adding features. But I wanted to help. I, I've gotten some questions now about Mac users since everything's all in video based now. I still have AMD coverage coming. It's a little more complicated. But if you're an M1 Mac user, you now have the ability to generate AI art on your own computer, behind your own closed doors, and do whatever you want with it. And that is freaking awesome. I do hope you have found this video helpful. Link to everything will be in the description below. Subscribe to Analog Dreams for more art and AI-focused tutorials and guides. And remember to be kind. Rewind.